Good afternoon, Periscope. You are on it. We're waiting for Facebook uh, to do what it does, but good afternoon. Good to see you guys all. This is a surprise. Normally, I will try to go on at like an you know, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, or even in the evening. But I have been working literally all morning trying to get some things ready. And I had planned to go live at 12 and I wasn't still ready. So then I said I would go live at 12.30. Anyway, it's 1.25 and we, here we are. And I didn't want a whole other week to go by. I actually went live like Monday or Tuesday and I had said I'd go live again sometime this week. But it has just been so, so, so crazy. Um, just trying to fit it in is uh, for forever. Thank you. The compliment on my um, look today. So. I like to, you guys know me by now, love to change it up. I think it's part of the artistic, creative nature uh, of who I am. And so you never know what you're going to get when you jump on. This is a really amazing topic that I'm going to talk about today because it is connected to a word as well as a program, which I've been sharing with you guys about that we're getting ready to release. But this is something that the Lord's kind of been dealing with me on for, for forever. So it's not something new. It's something that I've kind of been holding on so that uh, we've, we were, we've opened or we've launched our Wealth Transfer Academy this morning. And um, it's what bit.ly uh, forward slash Wealth Transfer School. And um, the school came out of what God began to talk to me about way back in 2012 that I'm going to begin to share with you guys today concerning um, the prophetic seasons that we're in um, and what God is doing in the body of Christ. And it's not just uh, based on you. It's connected to the nations and what he wants to do um, in the world. And so uh, last Wednesday, we had one of my good friends, uh, not last Wednesday, two days ago, Chris Mayaka came and he was was preaching and he was saying, you know, a lot of us love individual prophetic words, but we need to understand that when a corporate word is released, what word, any word that is good for the body is good for me. We need to begin to declare that because you are part of the body. And so when there are words, prophetic words that are released, that are speaking to the whole body of Christ, um, it is not just for all oh, the random church, it's for your whole life. And so what I'm going to share this afternoon is around that concept of what God has been saying and why it's so impactful, not just for the whole body of Christ, not just for Christians, but for the nation. So um, there's a little storytelling in this word, but back in 2009, I went to Hong Kong and I took a team to um, Hong Kong. And while we were there, I was actually, I had just finished my dissertation and my dissertation was working with um, refugees, specifically African refugees on religion just coping skills. So how did they use religion to help them cope? So while we're in Hong Kong, which is, you know, like a finance um, city and, you know, the high rises, the fashion, I absolutely loved it, fell in love with it. There was a group of refugees that we had an opportunity, especially, um, especially me, uh, to work with that were African refugees. And because no other nations around them would take them, Hong Kong at that point um, had like a refuge system. And so we got to do service with them and all of that. But in doing that, the Lord began to talk to me that we were in a season while we're in Asia, that went that there was a shifting that was getting ready to happen. That the world had looked to the West for uh, the you know, especially the U.S., the European countries, to be the the nations that were in power, the nations that were uh, the superpowers, the nations that were dominant in economy, dominant in finance, um, dominant in military. And the Lord began to show me and actually unravel a dream that I had several years prior that in the season that we were headed in, um, in this dream that I had, things were happening on the West and I had a voice in the dream that said, look to the East, look to the East. And there's many layers to that. It has to do with Jerusalem. But when I was in Hong Kong during 2000, uh, in 2009, the Lord also began to talk to me about Africans and Asians. And he began to talk about how there are nations and there are groups of people who for so long were overlooked. They were um, underestimated that 
that were that were considered to be the least or the last and in the years that were to come god was going to begin to raise up not only nations in africa but people in the african diaspora not only asian nations but even people from the asian diaspora they were going to begin to be raised up and they were going to pioneer and they were going to lead in the area of finance they were going to lead in the area of building in the area of economics and so when i got back there because one of the things that i do uh, i challenge myself prophetically is i want i look for anytime I, I release a global word or even if i receive it and haven't even fully released it yet i start looking for evidence and so during that time we really began to see the dominance of china um in economics and we began to see the dominance of china um in terms of uh buying and taking land and they, i mean they just have a brilliant plan in domination um it, but I, I don't have time to go into that right now. And so a prophetic word that um, one of the words during that time, and it, it came from Hillary Clinton at this point, and she was talking about Nigeria. I think this was in 2012. She was saying if they could fix some of the issues that were going on in their corruption and all of that, they would be one of the premier nations in the world. So someone who I don't even know if they're a believer was prophesying this about African nations. And then since then, you have seen certain African nations, Botswana, Rwanda, begin to emerge, especially Rwanda. If you guys don't watch anything on politics or the nations, go read, okay? Um, they have done such a tremendous job after going through all the, um, just the civil unrest that they went through. So, God began to do it. He began to show different countries. He began, obviously, China is a big superpower, but I was reading an article yesterday on the um, economic contributors or forces that are going to emerge in the next several years. And you have Malaysia, you have Thailand. As a matter of fact, the U.S. went from being number three to being number one um, as contributors to the economic GDP. So anyway, I don't want to go too much into all of that. But what we're seeing is that God is taking these countries that were least and he's making them, um, uh, he's raising them up. And it's not just about countries, it's about people. God is beginning to take people that were counted out. We've seen it in media in terms of people, celebrities coming to the Lord, people had counted them out. We're also gonna begin to see it in the area of finances. So this takes me back to this whole wealth transfer, uh, prophetic buzz that has been in the year, in the air, really for the last 12 years. And it's so important when it comes to the prophetic that you keep tabs, especially if you are a prophet. I, I don't understand these prophets that don't know what's going on in the nations, that, that that can't talk beyond Bible. All you can do is talk in tongues. Like if you expect, don't tell me you're an, a prophet to the nations. And one, you don't even like food from other nations. But beyond that, you don't know what's going on in other nations. So Anyway, I get really ravved up about this stuff because this is high level prophetic function. Uh, we are all really used to words that are like, you know, God's going to bless you. You know, he's, I'm going to have a breakthrough. But you have to understand that you are part of a bigger storyline. Your life is not just about you. There are layers of things that are happening in the nations and in the world that are connected to you. So starting, I would say, about 2006, 2007, they were prophetic words that began to be released by different prophets all over that we were in a season of a wealth transfer, that God was releasing wealth from the wicked to the just. And it was, you know, just kind of buzzing. People were feeling it. People were saying it. And then we saw around 2009, 2010 with the emergence of like online entrepreneurship. As a matter of fact, I am, that's my area. I'm an online entrepreneur and um, online courses are a billion dollar industry. In the last several 10 years, you have seen um, more millionaires be formed within e the USA than in any other time of history. So there are more common people becoming millionaires than in any other time of history. And that has to do with technology. That has to do with opportunities that are out there. And so people began to say, okay, there's this wealth transfer. God is going to bless me. God is going to release what has been held up by the enemy. You know, we pray about it. We pull about it. And I learned several things. And I actually went back 
back and forth about um, what I was going to talk about today because I wanted to talk about the lies that I believed about money, but I'll, ma I'll leave that for later on, probably not next week because next week is Pioneer Girl, so I'm going to be out of pocket, but maybe after I rest uh, from Pioneer Girls. But what I learned is that a lot of people are very religious and they're very spiritual, but they have a lot of false beliefs concerning money, concerning how growing money works, concerning how building wealth works. And beyond we even start talking about that, there are people literally even right now listening to this who struggle with the idea or the fact that Christians and believers should have money. And I'm not talking about money so you can build a big house or drive nice cars. Those are byproducts. The kingdom of God can only be fully advanced with money. I don't care how great your program idea is. I don't care how loving you are to the orphans. If you do not have money to fly to where they are, if you don't have food when you get there, if you don't have clothes to close them, you are actually preaching an empty gospel. Does that mean that the gospel does not work without money? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you cannot say, I want to set captives free, and then you set them free, or you, but you don't know how to work through policy. You don't know how to build transitional homes for them. You don't know how to connect them with people that can get them jobs, because all you've been doing is praying. And so there is this mixing um, and, and, and understanding that has to come to the body that even the first man that's really talked about in scripture, Abraham, one of the things that was very clearly articulated about Abraham is that he was very, very wealthy. And so I started to think, and I was like, I don't know about any men or women in scripture that were really highlighted that that any at any point in the story it says that these were very poor people right so there are stories about the woman with nothing to eat and to feed her child but she knows how to connect to the prophetic word and to the prophet and she's able to create resource out of the oil by creating vessels and so she was able to get herself out of that place of having nothing to a place of having something there are people like the woman with the issue of blood who had spent all her money chasing after doctors which the spirit of infirmity is connected to the spirit of poverty, but chasing after the doctors. But once she was healed, right, the money that had been spent to doctors no longer were spent. So I believe that the, in the kingdom of God, when it comes to our wealth and health, it's all connected. Scripture says that I desire that your you would prosper and that your soul would prosper, prosper physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so there are people who are praying for this wealth transfer, but they haven't began to really grow grasp what it looked like even in the kingdom of God for, for uh, people to be able to advance the kingdom even then. I mean, there were times Jesus had to pay taxes, right? And he didn't avoid them. He wasn't nervous, right? That's connected to the poverty spirit. And we'll touch on all this a little bit as I'm preparing you guys for the wealth transfer school. But that you, we got to learn how to think differently concerning money. And this is the thing about it. If it owes you, if it owns you, then you will be useless with it. So one of the things that I have seen with people that actually have money in the body of Christ, they are not moved by it. Their bodies, if they are fully mature and if they're really sons, they're not moved by labels. They could wear a label. They could not wear a label. It doesn't mean anything to them. They could drive a nice truck or they could sleep on the floor in an apartment. It doesn't mean anything to them. And so one of the things that I know that God is doing and what has had to be broken, especially on minorities is getting your identity from things. If the Lord can help you get your identity from him, then he can give you things. If the Lord can help you firm your identity in him, then he will give you things. And so I feel like we've been in this journey. That's why sonship has become a big buzz. That's why breaking the orphan spirit has become a big deal because the Lord is preparing us not only for the harvest. I mean, I was reading about Kanye's pastor. It's brilliant. Kanye is in a, in a position where right now, if God says, Hey, I want you to go do a Sunday service in DC, he's not going to be
be like, okay, well, I need to go ahead and start fundraising so that I can have this con um, this this free concert. He probably doesn't even have to. He doesn't have to charge for them because he's already in a place financially to be able to do that. And so there are things on, on many of you guys that don't have Kanye's money, but you have the heart of God, but you don't know how to tap into resources. So wealth is not just about what's in your bank account. Wealth is the ability to access what the kingdom of God is releasing in that season and in that hour. And so being wealthy is not always about having it, but it's about the connections. Oh my God, I cannot wait to just share. And I've been saying this for several weeks, what the Lord has done for legacy. We're going to share the full story to our church in a couple of weeks um, as we are getting ready to close on our 10 acre land. Um, so we had, we, they know that and we've you know gently released that um, out. But the story has to do with the right connections. It has to do with knowing the right people. And it's not anything that Pastor Soso and I could have done, but all we did was submit our life to the Lord, understand that we are sons, that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And then we began to see our footsteps be so ordained that there is no way we could have written what the Lord has done and what God is doing and is getting ready to do. So part of the prophetic word and what God is doing in this season, the first part is I'm getting ready to raise up nations and I'm getting ready to raise up people groups who were seen as the least or who were seen um, as less than. And I'm going to, um, sorry, my computer's dying. Let me see if I can get Pastor Sosa to bring me my charger. Um, so I, I'm going to begin to raise them up. But first, I need to make sure that their identities are wrapped around sonship, that they're not owned by what they do not have or what they do have, but who they are in the Lord and who God is causing them to be. And then third, I want to teach them on how to create wealth. And this is where I come in. This is where I'm going to share with you guys about the Wealth Transfer Academy School that has been sitting on me for several years now. And I feel like this is the right time. So what I feel like the Lord is doing and what I've seen in the body is that everybody's waiting for this money to fall from the sky. People are like, God said there's a wall transfer from the wicked to the just, and they're just waiting for it. Some of, a lot of people have grasped it. They understand that it comes with hard work. It comes with d determination or perseverance. It comes with the ability to push, but it also comes with the idea, the ability to realize the ideas that are God ideas. So a lot of people, and this is why I decided to create this academy, have all these ideas and they don't know how to separate them from a good idea and a God idea. And not only that, because they are seeing so many other people online and social media influencers making six figures and seven figures and what feels like overnight, they feel like they can just come up with an idea and launch it tomorrow. And then they get frustrated because it doesn't bear any fruit. And so I was like, no, 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 no. It's not that the Lord doesn't want to do this for the body of Christ. It's that the people of God don't know how to maximize and utilize and build and launch and create what is in them. Um, my, my same friend, Chris Mayeka, who was with us on Wednesday, gosh, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said, but he talked about how your, the, the Lord always uses your skill set and your education and your background in order to to promote the kingdom of God. And so some of us are like, um, some of us are like, well, you know what? I went to school for this and I'm just going to do this, but you are still struggling. You're not making bills. You're not trying, you, you're not able to, to push forward. And what the Lord wants to do and what I want to do is help people take the concepts, not just ideas, but your experience and your education and begin to put it in containers because that's how the woman with the uh, little oil who was all about to die had to do. She had to find the right containers to put what she had in, in order for it to multiply. And so if you have containers, you will always have oil. The issue, the issue is that it's not that you don't have oil. Every believer has an idea, has an experience, has an educational background, has a concept. But the problem that I have seen is you don't know how to put them in the right oil. 
marketing, branding, launching. And guess what? Wealth is not just created through social media or entrepreneur things. There are people that are lawyers um, that will build six figures, but they won't just build it by working with clients one-on-one. They know how to get contracts. They know how to build partnerships. And so there is so much more to it. I am not one of those people who believes that in order to be wealthy, you got to get off your job and start business. Business is not for everybody. Business is not for everybody. Um, one of my uh, pastor's favorite verses, my pastor, my husband, Apostle Babe Wokoma, he always says, cast your bread among many waters. And I feel like the Lord is really giving us a lot of ideas, but we don't know how to cast it. We don't know where to cast it. And you've heard it even in the secular realm, that very concept that in order to build wealth, you need to have multiple streams of income right? And um, that's part of casting your bread among many waters. You can be a teacher and stop complaining that teachers don't make enough because I have a peer in my online academy school that I I was part of that is a teacher that brings in $50,000 a month. You know what she does? She creates um, she creates plans for teachers who don't have time. She also developed a system on how to help young readers that are getting behind on how to catch up. And so she developed that system. She learned how to market it. She connected it with the teachers. If you could solve problems, you will never be poor. If you learn how to solve problems, you will never be poor. But it's not just about solving the problem because some of us, you know, we're like, oh, Jesus, help me. I just want to feed the homeless. Oh, I just want to help the, you know, whatever. And that's a really great concept. But let's talk about what does it look like to get contracts with major companies? Um, What does it look like not only to feed the homeless? And this is a tip. If you want to do non-for-profit work, do it after you have built a business. Because if you have a business that is bringing you enough revenue, you will be able to take that and fuel it into your nonprofit. What happens is that we do a lot of good work, right? But then we are hungry, our bills are behind, our credit is jacked up, and then we're like, but I thought, people are like unbelievers now because this is all about the harvest. Unbelievers are like, but I thought you were part of the kingdom. Like, why are you begging for money? Why is your car breaking down all the time? I thought you were part of the kingdom, right? And you're like, and and they're like, and then they're confused because they see how faithful you are and how well you love and how well you serve. And it's like, but this doesn't match up. If your God is so good and you're so good to him and you're serving him and you're building his kingdom, but your whole family's falling apart, your life, you don't even have health insurance. You You don't even know if you can go to the doctors when you're sick. I don't know if I want to be part of that kingdom. Because the kingdom, the harvest that is um, really penging right now, a lot of us are very comfortable with ministering to the poor, but we're not very comfortable to ministering to the rich. Uh, Someone was mad at me because I took a team to the Bahamas and they wrote me a nice long letter about how that is not missions because the people in the Bahamas have money. Well, I'm just giving you, uh, letting you know if you're still watching me, I'm taking a team to London. This is not about whether people have money or not. It's about whether they have poverty of spirit or not, whether they know Jesus or not. And we are so comfortable with ministering to those that are like us that we don't realize that there is a whole harvest field of people who have money and they're like, this is not giving me anything. Kanye says that he was dying under the weight of his sin, his sin. But you know what really irks me? You know what happens? Because I've seen it with my own eyes. When people don't have money and you bring to them a celebrity or you bring to them someone who has money, they feel like that celebrity is now their money pocket. And instead of focusing on developing them and maturing them and building them up in God, they're trying to figure out how they can come up based on that person's money. That's why, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but T.I. was extremely upset. He had gone to see Kanye at a pastor's church in Atlanta, and they said that while this, the, the movie stars were there, this pastor took up several offerings. Now, I wasn't there, so I don't know all the details, but you cannot say the harvest is plentiful. God is doing a work in Hollywood, and then the moment you have a, a, a chance to have lunch, you know what I like? Anytime I get, I get a chance now to go to... LA and I meet with somebody who's anybody, I want to pay for their lunch. 
I want them to understand that I am not there for anything, but for them to know who God is and who, what the kingdom is. And they can keep their money because you have a lot of people of influence that God is pulling on that will not come into the kingdom of God because they're so afraid of being pimped. But if what if us powerful, prophetic, mothers, fathers, prophets, doctors, whoever we are right now had our own money. Don't you think that God could trust you with greater influence? Don't you think that God could trust you with nations? We, we both my husband and I um, have a heart for Africa and we have some plans um, in the future for Africa. But one of the first things that we know that we need to know so that nobody can buy us out is that we need to create our own wealth. You can write as many checks as you want. I am not compromising because I don't need your money. I am here to serve the people of God. And so this whole wealth transfer, building wealth is about the future. And I really wanna take the, like I said, registration is open. I wanna take, it's eight weeks. It was only gonna be six weeks, but I was like, I wanna give them as much as I can. And not just me, I have people who are gonna talk about finances. The first week is on understanding the concept of wealth transfer, breaking the poverty spirit, looking at scripture. We wanna base all of this out of God's heart, not just another, you know, get rich quick or start a business. Like we want this to be based out of that. And then we're gonna talk about marketing, branding, products, events, books, your companies, partnerships. Um, I'll bring someone in to talk about um, the marketing aspect. I'll bring someone in to talk about finances, the legal part. And so it's an eight week course. It is gonna be worth its value. So there's a payment plan available. I want you guys to start um, planning now to be part of that. And that's January 23rd um, and it's gonna go for eight weeks. So I am super, super excited. Um, and uh, we will go, you know, I'm, I'm excited to just teach and encourage and uh, build you up. So someone is saying, where do we sign up? It's on Facebook, it's right above you, but on Periscope, it's bit.ly, so bit.ly forward slash wealth transfer school, wealth transfer school. And uh, you will see all the information there, everything that you're gonna get uh, as part of this academy. And we are really excited to equip. One of the reasons why I create products is based off of a need. So I will see, and this is something you'll learn even in the academy when I'm teaching you guys, is I look and I say, okay, Holy Spirit, what is needed? And then I also create products based off of questions. Like the questions that I frequently have is usually a key that people need this information. And then sometimes it's just a prophetic unction. Like this needs to be done now um, so that those that are able to partake of it can be advanced so um bit yep bit.ly slash thank you for posting it up for me i can't see your name because my phone is sideways but let's take some questions questions concerning the nations concerning business concerning wealth transfer um someone said yes seven to eight years yeah definitely um any of us and over the next several months i shared this last year i was like god I don't know, do you really want me to go into this? Like, there are so many people out there that teach courses on uh, business and on all of this. And I'm one of those people who's really multifaceted. And he was like, I have been able to break the spirit of poverty off of your life. And I need you to be able to teach that. And so I was really shy early on. We did an e-course coach last uh, class last year where I just taught people how to launch e-courses and I broadened it to every product. Um, and he's like, he, and, and he was giving me kind of like the courage to be able to share just I, I, oh, in the next several months, I'll be talking about just some of the, the monthly income and things that come in and the things that we have done um, to be able to break through two African children who had very hard working mamas um, and who persevered to get us to where we're at. Um, and we wanna give you guys all that we can to help you. There is, you can't say it's your environment. You can't say it's your country. Right now in one of the courses that I'm in, and that's one of the other things, if you wanna advance, you gotta invest in yourself. I, if you, there are so many Australians in there and these jokers are making money. But there were people that were in Africa that invested 2,000 American dollars to take the course that I was in in order to do something 
different for them. That is a lot of money in Africa, like to get that much money. And so I was so uh, like um, in awe and so proud of all my peers in my class that were, you know, waiting for their packages and things like that. And they're in nations that we would consider third world nations, but they knew if they had the right information, it would transform their life. And that's all that that is. I never talk about prices online. I want you to go to the website. I want you to read everything and then you can see the prices there. So someone was asking that. All right. Someone said, we started our business in 2009 from a dream from the Lord. Years and years of leaning have little, but God can make what we have and make it big, our business. Yeah. So yeah. And that's the thing. And God can give you such a great business idea. But what I've found out about believers is that sometimes we just don't have all the information. And there's a lot of information out there that's really free. Um, and I have coached so many people that all they needed was like 30 minutes with me and all the light bulbs came on. That they were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know we could do this. I didn't know we could do that. And so look for the free information. We'll probably do a free uh, webinar where we'll give you guys some of the, the free what you need to do. We're not necessarily going to tell you how to do it because you need to take the course to learn and how to do it um, for your courses. But honestly, I always say if a business is not hasn't moved within two or three, two years, you haven't made any money, meaning you haven't made any profit, then there is something going on in your structure. And that's something that needs to be assessed, that needs to be looked at. You can expect not to make any money in any business for the first six to six months to a year. And you should go into it with that understanding that I'm probably not going to make any money the first six months to a year. But if you've been at the same business for more than a year, two years, and nothing is changing, something is going on with your systems. Something is going on with your marketing. Something is going on with your branding that you need to look at. You may not be targeting the right people group. You may not have the right message. And we're going to go over all these things in the online academy. Um, all right. So questions. I missed some on Periscope here. The right information. Yes, it will transfer your life. One of the things that people always say about me is that I give languaging. That is one of my superpowers. I'm able to give languaging to your life. I give languaging about identity, about purpose. And now the Lord has really blessed me to be able to do it in the area of um, entrepreneurship as well. Uh, someone said, this is good teaching. Thank you for sharing it. No problem. And this is the other thing. You, you want to give value, right? Especially for those of you guys who part of your company, or, or no, not just even for this group of people who you are the brand. If you're going to create a product, make sure that it's good value, right? Um, just make sure that you are giving all that you have in whatever you are building, uh, because that is a concept of the kingdom of God. Like you don't want to do shabby work and you don't want to give all that you have. Um, will you share your perspective on credit and borrowing? See, I asked my husband to join me on this Periscope and Facebook because I knew that we were going to go into some of that stuff, but I will share my, um, perspective, at, but I want, I want to know if you're asking about personal borrowing or personal credit. If you're going to do any kind of big business, which is what my husband wants to do, most big businesses like owning companies, like we're trucking companies or things like that you're going to borrow. Like it just, you could have the money, but even these multimillionaires don't use their own money to do businesses. They use the bank's money to do businesses. They use their investors' money to do businesses. So if you're talking about it on that level, uh, then, you know, crediting and borrowing, that's part of how big business works. I don't feel like if you're just starting out on a business, you should borrow money, especially if it's less than $500 to start that business. Like that's a problem because what's that, what that's telling me is that the, the, your finances are already not at a place for you to be able to save up $500. So what that means is that when the business takes off or if it takes off, you're going to have a hard time managing the money that comes in there. So how you manage your personal life and your personal finances is very much connected to how you manage your business's finances unless you bring another manager in. And the problem with bringing another manager in is if you don't know how to keep track of your own money and all of that, that's how these people, stars and rich people get their money taken. 
And so it is important that as, as a business concept that you begin to learn to understand money. I am not very detail oriented. So I prayed for a husband who was when it came to money, but that doesn't mean that I don't know what's in our bank account, what's coming in. That doesn't mean I don't know how to pay our, no, 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 no. I still know all of that stuff, right? Because it's, it is our money, but I just happen to have somebody who, who loves doing it, who loves doing taxes. And so you want to get around people who can, you can trust that you can learn from if you don't know how to do it um, on your own. Okay, let's see what other questions here. Uh, Dr. Faith's Heart's Pure, thank you. Oh, you're in DTA, bless you, bless you. Um, will Destiny School open again in December? No, but we will have an, a, a 24 hour flash sale um, for DTA, our Destiny Training Academy, sometime in February. You got to join the wait list. Go to destinytrainingacademy.com and join the wait list. You will be the first ones to know when the flash sale is open. Will there be a payment plan for the VIP? I didn't see it on the site. I didn't put it on there just because it's just, it would be so many boxes. But if you want a payment plan for that, email info at askdrfaith.com and we can work with you about that. All right, let's see Facebook questions. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see Facebook. Um, for DTA students, can we do both the wealth? Yeah, and you DTA students, you guys have a huge discount. I've posted it in the academy. If you go into your actual academy, we're giving our DTA students a discount on the Wealth Transfer Academy. The Wealth Transfer Academy is at night and it's for eight weeks. So that's very different from DTA, which is you get three videos every week plus the live coaching from me every week. So you, we expect you to do both if you're called into business and we gave you guys a discount. So for those of you guys who are not Part of DTA, you get on the wait list so that next time you can get discounts on our courses. All right, someone, okay, so they were saying business credit and business boring. Yeah, so I answered your question. If it's big business, um, I would say if it's over, no, I don't know what business you're trying to do. Um, so I don't want to give exact amounts of how much is okay to borrow if you're going into business, but definitely if it's less than 500, I wouldn't be borrowing it. Um, Let's see, what is the bit.ly link, bit.ly slash wealth transfer school. All right, any other questions? How do you know which business idea God wants you to focus on? So it's not about what God wants you to focus on, it's about what do you have experience in, what do you have time for, and what do you have money for? So a lot of times we um, overthink God's plan, God's heart, and we feel like it has to be, you know, like God has to show us this big picture and that's how we know what to do for God. No, 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 no. Do I have the experience in this? Do I have the education in this? If, if it requires education, because when I say education, I don't mean necessarily college or school. It means the right information and do I have the money? The other thing I like to say, which my husband is like, eh, um, I like to say what is going to make you the most money in the quickest period of time, right? Uh, because especially if you're just starting out, you're trying to create income so that you could maybe do other businesses or bigger business. So um, I will be having him on um, because it's fun. You'll be able to see our different um, approaches to this. All right. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much. How to handle your money. Uh, good teaching. Thank you. Okay. How do you profit in something like Facebook, YouTube, talk shows? You got to take my class. Um, I will teach you that in World Transfer Academy, but there are a number of ways. So once you get, um, especially YouTube, once you get to a number of subscribers, you, YouTube actually starts emailing you and they will say, do you want to get, um, you know, money from commercials on your uh, YouTube? And so they will put certain commercials, um, sponsorships around, um, and you could also do like affiliate linking. There's a lot of stuff that you could do, but the number one way is ads on YouTube. So the ads appearing on your um, YouTube as well as on your, you can then connect it to your personal, um, like if I have a lot of traffic to my AskDrFaith.com website, I can go through YouTube, connect it to that, and then the traffic pays you that way. So 
it is actually amazing. So the first thing that if you feel like you want to get paid, like Facebook has just started with subscriptions um, stuff, but Facebook is not necessarily for making money. Facebook is about building your audience and connecting to them. And then you could sell your products on Facebook, right? But uh, right now they're just starting some things where you could actually make money by building your audience. So the first, we spend two weeks on how to build your audience, how to create to your, like how do you connect to your market? How do you know the people that are supposed to buy your cat sweaters that you've been knitting for 15 years, right? Because God told you to make cat sweaters. How do you connect to the other teachers that you're supposed to sell these plans to? So audience is huge. And that takes several months um, to build. And for some, it's taken several years, especially now it's months because there are ways, there's algorithms, there is things that you could do to build it up really quickly. But the number one thing is consistency. And you cannot buy that. One of the things that I've seen in entrepreneurship, and I'm going to love doing these videos the next couple of weeks because I love this, is a lack of consistency. Like you can't say, oh, I want to build an audience and then you go live once every six months. People are going to forget you. When I first started, especially when Periscope came out, that was in 2014, a lot of us went live every single day because we had to build that base. Now, some of you guys sell, um, you sell t-shirts. You're like, well, what am I going to talk about? You're going to talk about your brand. And there's so many other things besides just going live. So there's specific products that are really good for Instagram. There's some products that are really good for Facebook. They're really good. There's some products that are really good for Pinterest. And we will learn all that stuff in the academy. So we're going to talk about online entrepreneurship. Every brick and mortar modern business, I don't know if that's how you say it, but every business that was only in a building, a physical building that did not transfer over to online has died out. Because online, it, um, online marketing, e-commerce is not only the future, but it is the present. And so you have seen companies that have literally fallen apart because they did not know how to maximize leveraging online, uh, creating an online presence, marketing, and all of that. So that is important. We've also seen it with churches. We just in that age that you've got to create that presence, whether you sell Coke cans or you sell courses or you are in the business of coaching, whatever you do, or you're in the business of consulting with Fortune 500 companies. I have a daughter like that. She's brilliant. She worked with VPs for forever. And I was like, baby girl, you're going into entrepreneurship. We got to get your website. We got to get your social media pages. And then if you have been in corporate all your life, you're not going to be focused on Facebook. You're going to be focused on LinkedIn. You're going to be focused on the appropriate um, avenues that are going to help build your specific brand. So that's the stuff that we're going to teach. Someone said DTA is life changing, the best investment uh, for yourself. You guys are awesome. It is. And it's so, it's dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap. You get for the value, um, these students got in at $39 a month. You get uh, what I would normally charge if it wasn't within this context, like $400. So they get a lot of love and care um, in the academy. So you can join that by joining the wait list. Okay. Uh, I took your e-course and DTM learning consistency is key. Even if I only have a couple followers. Yeah, because this is the hard thing. A lot of you guys have paid a lot of money to a lot of courses but you've got to follow the steps. I have people that not only did I invest the course in or that took my courses and I'm watching them and I'm like, you skip this step, you skip that step. And then they're frustrated that they're not doing what they need to do or the money's not coming in, but you've got to follow the steps. I have never taken, whether it's a free course or a paid course and did not follow exactly what was taught to me. Um, when is the Academy? It starts January 23rd. It's online Thursday nights and it's going to be a live one. All right. Hey guys, I do not like it because I think that it is unfair for you guys to advertise your companies and your information on my platform that I have taken time to build. So if you have books, if you have businesses, don't share your links on my, on my stuff. You need to ask permission before you do that. Uh, when you take the course, people will get a chance to share that. Those that were part of our 21 day fast, um, we created a link for them to share those type of things, but please don't, don't do that. All right, what do you think is the gap between someone who has a gift for solving problems and figuring things out to having access to the problems that generate wealth? Let's see, gap between someone who has a gift for solving problems and figuring things out 
to having access to the problems that generate wealth. So the problems that you're called to fix are normally based off of your education, based off of your experience, based off of your environment, okay? Um, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the, the Netflix film of the young Malawian boy who created a windmill that was based out of a need or an assessment in his environment. And that ended up being a Netflix movie. And he's actually here in North Carolina now, but you, you don't start, don't think of it like, what are the problems out there that will make me money? And let me make, let me solve that problem. No, 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 no. You need to solve problems based off of your experience, your expertise and your education. And out of that, then you will be able to create something. Um, I love technology. At this point, though, when it comes to a tech company that creates maybe apps or that creates different software, because one of the ways to grow a company's software, I'm not going to be like, oh, there is this gap in this technology. So let me go and figure out how to make that technology. No, I'm going to say, who can I invest my money into that already has the education, has already the background to be able to make the, the app for me or to be able to develop this specific software. So I have no business right now trying to start uh, creating income from creating software tech. Uh, that's not what I'm wired to do. I am not, that's just not me, right? And so don't try to create finances based off of a wealth, based off of what you think the world needs. Like just look around. What do the people around you need? What do the people in your industry need? Are you a teacher? I've seen people on Shark Tank, I mean, who've created simple stuff like a toilet roll holder that solved a problem or, a, you know, a Christmas tree folder. I mean, it's just like little things. But once again, persistency, consistency, marketing, branding, connecting, those are the things. And guess what? You don't need money to do half of these things. A lot of people are like, oh, I, need to, I want to do a business, but I don't have the money. Half of these things, you don't even need to do money. You don't even need money. All right, I'll take two more questions and then I'll go there. Uh, break writer's block for blogging. Once again, you blog based off of what's going on in your life and what you're passionate about. So you look at your audience. Who is your audience? Who reads your blogs? And then you could even do a simple blog um, asking your readers to comment on what they want to learn. I've done that before. Like, hey, guys, if I did this course, would you be interested in it? Or what are the top, top 10 videos you would like for me to teach? So if you're stuck as a blogger, ask your audience. This blog is, a. I want to see your comments below. What would you like to learn from me? But if you don't have anybody reading your blog and you make that post, post nobody's going to comment. So before you even start blogging, I would say make sure that alongside your blogging, you have a plan to actually introduce your blogging to people who read it. Okay? Um, and let's see, Periscope, I've been ignoring you guys a little bit here. Let's see. Thank you for the link. Respect. Okay. This is like going on to someone else's land and trying to build a house. Yeah. 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 Um, she paid 37. She was one of the early ones in DTA. Okay. What's the name of the movie? I don't know what else. Oh, it's something about a windmill. I can't remember the boy who harnessed wind, the boy who harnessed wind. How do you balance and find energy to do it all oh, family ministry, workplace, self-care. This is one of the questions I am covering in the VIP session at pioneer girls this Thursday. I have, I'm so excited to teach the hundred and 20 women or however many are in VIP. Um, so I'm going to be giving them tools on how to balance all of this. But the truth is I am high energy. So part of what you see is part of my temperament. Um, I am extremely driven. Uh, go, 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 go. But the other thing is I just prioritize. Um, I figure out what are the three most important things in my life right now. And those are my children and my, my husband and children, my church family and my business because I'm in a season of productivity, right? And so I don't get to do many fun things. Last night, I got to go to see a movie. My good friend, Tiffany Montgomery, who's also one of our speakers at Pioneer Girls, rented out a whole movie theater because she's a boss and um, for the movie Harriet, which I absolutely love. Like I could go on and on. And I was no almost not gonna go because I was like, girl, I'm so tired. She had invited me to come and she's like, just push. And I pushed and it was wonderful, but I don't do that a lot. Like I don't, 
My best friend lives all the way in Massachusetts. And so I try at least every two months or so to spend time with girlfriends because that's healthy and that's normal. But it's not a priority right now in my life, right? Because I am building my business. Um, and I also love having friends who are also building. So they understand. Like we we can, I they're not going to be irritated if I don't call them back right away. We have a mutual understanding. Um, but priorities is really important, understanding the season that you're in. Fridays are rest days. My other temperament is a sanguine and I love fun. I love traveling. I love shopping. I love spending all the money that I make. Not all of it. Thank God for my husband. Um, so I also have built in fun in our family. Uh, one thing that I've actually learned from my pastor, Dr. Jermon Glenn, who is amazing. He's going to be one of our VIP speakers and he and his wife are going to do a session at Pioneer Girls for the married couples and singles. He plans all their vacations like a year ahead. So that's one thing that I've already started doing for my family as well. So you just got to be organized though. You got to be organized. You said that you're working a full-time high pressure position, 60 plus hours a week. You've got, you, so you, there's going to come a point where you have to choose. There's going to come a point where you have to choose in terms of, um, well, you work, but you're not trying to start a business. So there's no choosing there you got to make priority for what's important and you chunk it. So if I work from nine to five, I try not to bring my work home. Right. And I've done that before. I worked in a nine to five industry. Try not to bring the work home, focus five to eight on my children, eight to 10 on my family. I work all day. I work like 12 hours a day. So I totally understand the 60 plus. We probably hit more than that between our business and our church. Um, but we, I chunk my time evenings. I get off the phone at five o'clock and so on and so forth. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking because the research says when your Facebooks and your Periscopes go over 45 minutes, people's energy starts dwindling. So um, I know you guys can keep asking me questions, but I'm going to um, stop it right here. I am hoping to see a bunch of you guys at Pioneer Girls next weekend. If you're still on the fence, register. It's going to change your life. We're going to talk um, concerning business, concerning spiritual development, apostolic development for women, to being a mother, wife. We're going to cover the whole gamut. That is the goal of Pioneer Girls, um, working with the woman holistically. So men, you are welcome to come. The night services are open to the public starting Friday night and Saturday night. They are open to the public so uh, you can join us. Someone said, is it online, right? No, not yet, but I think, so we weren't going to stream it, but we've talked to our media team and I think they're making a decision today. So we'll put up a sign and we'll email our email list and let you know if we've decided to stream Pioneer Girls. A lot of people have been asking, that's why we're contemplating it, but they're making that decision today if we're going to um, stream it. So bless you guys. What else? London. We'll be there December 20th, Friday night, and all day December 21st, our Inner Healing and Deliverance Conference. You're going to learn about inner healing. You're going to learn about deliverance. You're going to learn about prayer strategies. You're going to learn about growing in authority. And so you can register for that at AskDrFaith.com. And last but not least, my book is out. Um, we haven't made a big deal of it yet, Well, but you can go to my um, uh, website and you can get the ebook and then you can go to my um, Amazon or Barnes and Nobles and also purchase it. We're going to have all the copies of Pioneer Girls and that next week we're going to pump the book like crazy. So if you you were excited about healing your past, you could also pick that up. All right. Bless you guys. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.